Hey guys, how's it going about Adventure Investing today? So today we're gonna to be talking about Village Farms. If you haven't already heard the news, it was a massive day in Village Farms. Um, so today's gonna to be a little bit different of a video. I really struggled with wondering if I should make a video about this because I really feel like in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't mean anything. Um, but at the same time, I thought it was something important to talk about. You never hear me talking on this channel about manipulation or a lot of people have theories like, well, this stock is being manipulated, this or that. Now, for the most part, I, I really don't feel like that happens a lot in the market. I feel like a lot of people get a little bit too hyped up in this. They talk about technical analysis. You guys probably know I'm not the biggest fan of technical anal analysis. Um, and they talk about you know shareholders doing certain things, scooping up shares, stuff like that. But there's no doubt in my mind that there is manipulation in the market, of course. That's why we have oversight committees like the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, and other bodies. Um, wherever there's money involved, there's you know there's going to be manipulation. Do I think the markets are you know relatively efficient, and you know do take care of a lot of this? Yeah, I do. Um, but there is times, you know, and I've seen it a lot, and I, I really try not to be biased. Like, I, I, I think I've seen a little bit of it with Apple. I've seen it with other really undervalued companies that, um, that I've owned, probably because I follow them a lot better than other ones. So I have seen it out there, and I generally don't talk about it a lot. But when I see something that seems like manipulation so much, and it doesn't seem right, it seems wrong. It seems wrong to me what someone's doing, and it's very obvious why they're doing it. You know. I feel like it's something you know that I should talk about. So today we're going to be talking about Village Farms. Uh, again, let's take a look at the stock right now. Yeah, today was you know today was a just utterly nasty day. I think it was down around twenty percent at one point today. Uh, we closed a little bit better, about ten point eight six percent. So the reason for this, if you weren't aware, is there's a um, I wasn't even aware about uh, of this company to be honest called Citron Research. Um, Andrew Left is, I believe, a, a, a columnist with them. I think he's a founder. And he basically put out a report calling Village Farms a fraud. Now, it, it, I think that a lot, of, a lot of people really overreacted, and that's why the stock tank. He puts a $1 price target on Village Farms. Um, and I think that before, you know, I think they obviously did a real injustice because a lot of people freaked out and if they would have actually read the report, went into it a bit, maybe they would have understood a bit more. So we're gonna do a little bit of that today. Now I wanna caution you, I'm gonna go through the report. I haven't done an, you know, an extensive amount of research because I really wanted to get this video out for you guys. Um, but it really, to be quite honest, it's quite laughable. So if you wanna know who Andrew Left is, let's take a look at Wikipedia. So Andrew Edward Left, uh, he's an activist, short seller, author, and editor of the online investment newsletter Citron Research, formerly Stock Lemon. Uh, so under the name Citron Research, uh, Left publishes reports on firms that he claims are overvalued or engaged in fraud. Known, uh, sorry, Left is known as for advising investors on short selling and has appeared on various media outlets such as CNBC and Bloomberg to talk about his opinions on stocks. In 2017, Left was called the bounty hunter of Wall Street uh, by the New York Times. So I think it's really important to, to know that, to know who this is, to know, you know who, who this guy is. Obviously, he's a short seller. His interest is for stocks to tank and he takes positions in them. He's an activist, meaning he's usually disruptive. A lot of activists, investors go in, they disrupt boards, uh, board of directors, you know, executive stuff like this. But this guy, if you do a little bit of research on him, this is not his first time doing this. Uh, he did this with Tilray, um, and you know I'm not touting Tilray. I think you know that's not a company to invest in. I think Village Farms is a much better company, obviously. Uh, and of course, it caused Tilray to have a massive reaction in the market. Um, and I believe Tilray was around forty, fifty dollars a share then, and then as we all know, spiked to three hundred. So uh, really didn't make much difference there. He also did this with a company called Shopify. You know, utterly destroyed the stock for a while, and then Shopify now. Let's take a look at it right now. Yeah, that's where we're at right now with Shopify. Yeah, it's like, you know, it has incredible value. So, this guy, if you do the research on him, he has been right in some cases. He uh, also made a call on Nvidia. Uh, Nvidia did tank a while ago here, but he was well before that, so he was wrong, wrong, wrong. Um, so he has had some cases where he's actually been right. 
Um, but it should be known that I think 90 some percent of his calls are always short calls. They're always bearish. You know, he's always talking about fraud and whatnot. And 90 some percent of the time he is wrong. So if you're going to pick companies with lofty valuations, especially in, you know, very trepidatious sort of, you know, exuberant markets like marijuana or chip sets or something like that, you could throw a dart at a wall and find a couple that are going to fail. So that doesn't prove any validity whatsoever. So today he came up with a report basically calling Village Farms a fraud. Now, you know, this confused me a little bit. I mean, if you're going to call a company a fraud, uh, you know, especially a pot company, why don't you pick one that doesn't have 30 some years of experience and one that doesn't already have an underlying vegetable business that was generating tens of millions of dollars a year? Like, how is that a fraud? Like, that is the part that is just absolutely, it's, it's in my opinion, it's criminal. That, that he can do that, but we'll get onto that in a little bit. So let's go through the report. Let's take a look at right, it right here. Looking at their front page, I mean, maybe maybe somebody who you know was a little bit smarter would just stop at this front page. When you look at this logo, they can't even spell investigate. Uh, investigate, right? It says what? Investigate. Like, I think that kind of just shows you the level of effort that was put into this report. Um, Let's take a look a little bit further in here. So they managed to actually um, fix their spelling error on the inside, so that was good. I was very proud about that. Um, but the first page here, Village Farms. So basically this article here, or this first page of it, is describing Village Farms as a failed tomato producer on the brink of bankruptcy. Now, you should note the kind of language that's used here. He speaks to Village Farms as being a manip uh, manipulation, fraud, those are some big words to put around, you know, to throw around there. And when you look at the words that are put in here, what are the words we're looking at? Failed and on the brink of bankruptcy. Well, Village Farms wasn't wildly profitable or anything like that, but they've been on produce, they're in stores, like they're in Costco, um, I believe they're in like uh, the Canadian Superstore here in Canada. Um, so to say that they're a failed company, that to me is pretty much an outright, an outright, outright lie. I can't even talk tonight. Um, and, you know, it's this kind of language that really proves in my mind who's trying to manipulate who. Let's continue reading this article here. So the whole premise of this article is essentially to say that Village Farm has, you know, partnered with the devil. And that's what's kind of interesting with this whole thing is that this isn't even really about Village. This is about um, uh, Emerald Health and the joint venture that has being uh, established by the two of them. Um, here we see on the right a little bit of a checklist, which, you know, I wonder why they even put this in. It's talking again all about Emerald. Uh, false press releases, it says at the bottom. Promotional press releases regarding Village Farms joint ventures have been follow followed by rampant selling. So what does that even mean? Like, does has Village Farms done that? Or is that somebody else? Is that somebody, you know, who has interest in the company? There's all these ambiguous terms in this write-up that just make you shake your head. Let's take a look again here. Here it's talking about Pure Sun Farms. Now this was the joint venture between the two companies. And here he's focusing on the board of directors. Specifically, he's talking about Avtar Dillon, who is an infamous penny stock from a promoter. Okay, well, if you could provide me with some evidence that he's an infamous one, that's that's fine. But again, here we are talking about his family now too, his nephew, his close associates, stuff like that. Now, if these are actually valid points that this guy is presenting, um, he's still only talking about Emerald Health. You know, it, it's kind of like the, the analogy of, you know, just because I've had bad girlfriends in the past, is that, you know, does that mean everything that they do is who I am today? You know, I can definitely see where the concern lies, but these are board members that aren't even part of Village Farms. Now, board members can be replaced. I think I put that up here. Yeah, they can be replaced. Um, they're generally quite expendable. They're voted out, voted out by the shareholders. So to blame Village Farms as being a fraud because of some hearsay on uh, a joint venture that this company that they're having a joint venture with made a partner with somebody else in the past and that stock went down is just I, that's just bad reporting in my opinion 
And you see a little bit more of this here. It says, we've seen this movie before. The historical performance of stocks that Avatar Dylan has been involved with speaks for themselves. Now he shows a different, uh, uh, numerous different stocks down here that um, had a current share price and down from the peak how much they were down. And this guy was somehow associated with these companies. Now this is the only kind of, this is the only part of the report that actually scares me a little bit. Like I said before, it's not the biggest deal because it's not, he's not really even part of Village Farms. But this is something that I'd be looking at. Um, is this all true? Can I sift through all this? I, you know, I'm more concerned about the production capacity if that if that's legitimate, which I know it is with Bill Trumps. But the demand is there. The demand has always been my greatest concern, and we're already at, you know, an undersupply in the Canadian market here, and we're not even talking about the United States or even worldwide after that. So, you know, this would be kind of like the least of my concerns, um, but it still is concerning enough. Um, that it would be something that I would look into, but I would say it was really the only valid point that I saw in this whole presentation. Again, he just does more of this here. Uh, before Village Farms, look at this, uh, look at this company that had a joint venture with uh, Emerald Health and look at their share price. So that must mean that, uh, uh, that Village Farms is gonna tank, same here. Oh, we had another unsuccessful attempt by the other company that is in joint, you know, <laughs> has had a joint venture with some other silly thing. Uh, like here's one when they got involved with blockchain. So they, they did a joint venture with a blockchain company. Well, we all know what happened to Bitcoin and we're not talking about Bitcoin here. So why is this relevant? I mean, it might speak to that bad decision making in terms of Emerald Health, but does, does that mean that this was a bad decision? Does that mean establishing yourself in a company with a solid underlying greenhouse business that they can fall back on that has a massive potential in my opinion in the future to produce high capacity, be one of the top three in Canada? Does that mean that's a bad, you know, does that mean that that's a bad idea? I don't know, I'll let you answer that for yourself. So the next page we see here is managed depart departures. I guess this is meant to scare you. Um, they're saying there's, you know, been a mass exodus of senior executives, again, from who are we talking about? Emerald Health, we don't, we're not even talking about Village Farms. And this goes back to 2014. I'll remind you that we're in 2019. I'm trying to think of all the um, board members. I believe Tesla, the CFO, left. We've seen some of their top engineers leave uh, to Apple. Does that mean they're doomed? You know, I know you guys are probably aware that I'm a little bit bearish on Tesla, but we see that if you follow any stocks, if you look at this as somebody who's not very educated in terms of investing, this scares you. This is a fear manipulation tactic. Um, even in an amazing company like Apple, like I say, that's the most solid, unfraudish company that you can find. Um, we saw, you know, the senior vice pre uh, president of marketing. We saw, the, you know, so many executives that stepped down or left, and it's it's doomed because now they don't have this engineer. This is so normal. So to throw this in a presentation and say this is this is evidence of fraud. That's conjecture. That's just silly, silly supposition. Let's continue going here. Now we're talking about stock promoters. This is my favorite one. So I don't even know what's, you know, to be honest, maybe I am a little bit ignorant here, but they're saying that there's been people um, promoting the stock. Some of them, I don't even know who they are. They're sponsored. Um, is there any evidence that this is Village Farms that's doing this? And even if it, even if it was, I mean, look at this one right here. It's one of the largest and longest operating vertically integrated greenhouses growers in North America, and is the only publicly traded greenhouse uh, traded greenhouse produce company in Canada. Okay, so um, say Village Farms did pay for that, so that's fraud to say that they're basically a very successful greenhouse company. Like I, <laughs> that's why I wrote the title as the real manipulation. Like who's doing the fraud here? Um, I don't see any evidence whatsoever. This this could be bad. I would look into this. Some of these, I mean, if Village Farms paid some of these people to promote this, but I don't see any evidence of this. This seems just like conjecture to me here. The next page that we're looking at is, uh, so the management discussion and analysis. So if you're not aware of this, companies basically have to outline all the risk factors of the company. So this is a good thing because if you don't outline this, I mean, the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission can come after you. Um, so on this, when we're looking at it, it says two new risk factors that stood out to Citron were liability of illegal activities by employees, contractors, or consultants, 
The joint venture is exposed to the risk that its employees, independent contractors, consultants, service providers, and licensors may grant engage in fraudulent or other illegal activities. So here it says, if you disclose fraud, doesn't it make committing fraud okay? <laughs> well, again, here we're, uh, we're, we're, we're messing with words, we're manipulating here. That's just like saying all the risks that Apple puts on their, you know, their MDNA. Does that, is, so Apple, you have a risk that, you know, say Huawei or whatever comes in and they steal market share and this is a risk. And you're basically saying that's okay. No, they're saying that's a risk. So again, we have this, this bending of words here. Like they lay out a potential risk factor because maybe they are a little bit aware of this. I could see that maybe this might be a little bit of a concern. VFF, Village Farms is actually disclosing this. And, and now it's being thrown back in their face. I mean, tell me what you guys think down below, but I mean, <laughs> exposing all possible issues that could arise is a good thing. Um, and saying that this section investigate them because they're, you know, laying out any potential issues that could arise. What is that? So let's go on to the next one here. This one I'm not even gonna really talk about. Uh, so it looks like you took about two seconds to do this. Uh, looks like you couldn't even get on a desktop here. Well, maybe it was on a desktop computer here. Basically did like a Google, you know, a Google uh, review of, you know, this, this, this other partnership that it, with NatureCrisp. Um, so they're basically saying they're a nothing bird. So that is proving again that the sex should investigate village farms because they partner with someone that they don't think is good. What more do you want me to say about this one? Let's go on to the next one. This one is actually my absolute favorite out of all of them. So this is, um, the CEO and these are some of the sell orders that he's done. So let me read this to you. It says, while Village Farms Management's enlisted third tier Canadian brokerage, brokerage firms, I like that third tier brokerage firms to complete bought deals, management was actively selling stock into these bought deals. Despite raising over 50 million through these bought deals on cannabis hype, cannabis hype, so this whole industry I guess is hype, Village Farms only has less than $12 million of cash on the balance sheet as they subsidize a money losing business. Let me stop there. They're actually one of the few that actually produce profits. So maybe we should go after this guy for false information. Um, while management has found a way to siphon money out of the company. So they're siphoning money out of the company. Okay. If you don't know what a bot deal is, it's go back and watch my video on, you know, what is a stock and how it's created. But this, like he's, he's right. There's not a ton of capital that village farms has in terms of you know cash uh, they have a lot of equipment and stuff like that a lot of employees but when a company needs cash they can go debt or equity a lot of times especially when you have a very small mar small market cap or number of shares outstanding they'll, they'll issue more shares now that's beneficial because you compare it to other companies that are trading even at like 50 you know 50 dollars a share tilray um you look at some of the biggest you know marijuana players they're at like tens of billions of dollars market caps. Village Farms now is only at about 500 million because they have so few number of shares outstanding. And market cap is, you know, watch one of my other videos on this too if you want, look for it. Price times the number of shares that are outstanding. So even by issuing more shares, which actually dilutes shareholders, it's still a tremendous value in terms of taking on debt and taking on the risk that's associated with that debt, debt right? So there's a good debt equity mix that a company can do. So. That's what these bought deals are. So Village Farms just recently had another one. And now the argument here is that the CEO is siphoning money out of the company. Now, if you're even remotely involved in the investment community, you can look at 8Ks. Um, I just did a video on how to find these things, on how to read, look up financial statements. Look at this. You know, executives are selling shares all the time. And I'm not just saying like small amounts of shares, they're selling a ton. Let's take a look at this right here. This guy is going back to 2017 when the closing prices was $2, $4, $5. He was selling bigger lots of shares back then than he was at $20 a share. If you look at the top there, he was selling at six, um, he was selling at 21, 20. Um, he sold 70,000 shares, 65,000 shares at the top there. But look how many millions he sold uh, down there. Well, one of those is not actually, those are holdings, sorry. But he was selling just as much, 300,000, 210,000. So, he, he owns a significant amount of the company 
And in terms of the market cap, so in terms of the total value that he's selling, he's not siphoning money out of the company, he's selling them on the open market, right? Because that's how you get the money from because he owns so many shares. Um, so they're basically trying to make the argument that they're issuing sh shares that he can sell them. Well, if they were having to issue shares that so he could sell them, he'd be selling all of his shares. He wouldn't still have a huge amount of shares. So what is that? What does this even mean? How is this relevant? So you're using the fact that the CEO and potentially other executives are selling small amount of shares as evidence that he's siphoning money out of the company. Like how incredibly stupid is that? Like if you know anything about this kind of stuff, like really give me a break here so that was my favorite one that was my favorite section to read like i mean this just basically put the you know bullet in the coffin in terms of his argument let's go on to the conclusion here so it says citron has exposed more stock fraud in 18 years than any non-government agency well you've been wrong most of the time uh village farm has spent years as a sleepy canadian stock once they got approved for the listing on the nasdaq their volumes and share price increased exponentially yet the problem is once you choose to list on the us you are subject to sec laws and regulations wow so there's the fear tactic again especially in the cannabis space the sec does not care about financial pregnancy projection beneficiary ownerships and stock promotions you live by the sword you die by the sword um so basically it goes on to say at the end here the stock will quickly trade back to one dollars if it doesn't get halted before that and that's probably the last piece of evidence that you should look at in terms of that one dollar why is this significant why is one dollar significant it's such a psychological psychological thing. It's like a buck, right? I mean, Village Farms is maybe going to be close to 30 before, and he puts this in. This, to me, is more than, you know, more than just a, a coincidence that they put. Do you think they did a valuation to come with the $1? Because we're already talking at a relatively or extremely low valuation on the company. So show me, if you want to give a $1 price target, that's fine. You know, that's fine, Andrew. You can give it a $1 price target. But show some evidence. I mean, don't just pull it out of the hat, right? Even I... I don't have a lot of time to do things for you guys sometimes, but I like to do show you how I'm doing my projections, uh, like the Tesla video I did and whatnot. So, um, another thing I was gonna come, I, I was gonna talk about really quick. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit not a little bit more prepared today, guys, but I really want to get this video for you, and it's getting a bit late. Um, Can trust. They also mentioned that this is a better company, and it's kind of funny when we talk about manipulation. Um, I saw Village Farms by Motley Fool, some other. Uh, you know, websites online talking about how Village Farms is ramping up production, they were a good investment, and suddenly it turned, and it started comparing it to Cantrust, saying, well, Cantrust is better, Cantrust is a better investment in our opinion, and then boom, this comes out today, and then uh, this um, uh, Andrew Left then also recommends that as well. To me, that just smells fishy in itself. Um, so if you're not aware of what he's doing, he's driving, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious. He's driving the stock down, right? So he's making money. He's making a ton of money on it. So anybody's free to say anything that they want. But in my opinion, if the Securities and Exchange Commission is going to be looking at anybody, they should be looking at him. I mean, he can make all the claims he wants in the world. It would be better if he provided some evidence for those claims. Um, but when you start doing these types of manipulation tactics, one dollar just share these scare tactics here and there, um, you see the market react the way it is. And the market is meant to be an orderly flow of information, um, orderly trades, and this just creates chaos for his benefit. And people lose money if they don't know. Like personally, I'm still holding through it. I told you guys in my other videos that I think it's still a significant invest, uh, risk. Like I think the most significant risk is not the company itself, but the industry as a whole, where it, I think it is a bubble, but it's a bubble that still has room to grow. So you, you know, you gotta recognize trends sometimes and get involved, and the strong ones, the low cost producers, and ones that are gonna last. Um, so I think that that's something that, you know, so that that's something that you should be involved in, of course, right? So I'm holding, but I just, you know, I, I just think that it's, personally, I think it's criminal. I really hope that somebody would hold him accountable, not because I'm just a shareholder, but because it's, it's just wrong. I only own about 865 shares or something like that. There's other people that own a lot more than that. And, you know, I hope that they really look through the port and they don't just look at the headlines and go, oh my God, this is so bad. Because when you really look into what, what's there, there's nothing there. There's really nothing there. Do I think we're in for a bumpy ride ahead now? Yeah, I think we do because for some reason this guy gets attention. I didn't even know about him before today, to be quite honest. Um, 
So it was news to me, so I did a little bit of research on him. But, you know, I don't talk about this much on this channel. I'm sorry that this kind of went on and on and on. I'm maybe a bit rambling about this, but it's just, it really irritates me to see um, how people can manipulate, how manipulation happens, and turn, they turn it around and make it sound like another company is a scam. You know, like a, like a solo company is a scam. Always risk, guys. Uh, I mean, do what you feel fit with the, with the stock. But I wanted to go through it really quick, give you the news on it, give you my opinion, and hope that I could shed a little light quickly to you uh, in terms of a little bit of my experience, what I've seen uh, with companies in terms of CEOs selling, stuff like that, and, you know, give you my opinion on just, you know, basically this trash, if you will, that was written. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Um, hopefully it, does, it doesn't get too much worse than it is. I'm just holding, seeing what's happening. I'm long. I'm long on the village farms. That's going to be it for today, guys. I'll see you on the next one.